Good morning. You're very welcome to Awake in the Heart. And this is the last of our, our weekly uh, sessions of Awake in the Heart at 10 a.m. MST. And there'll be a little change in our schedule uh, for next week. But for today, I'm very delighted to have Mystic David Hofmeister with me. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Thank David. Thank you. It's great to be here. Mm. And we had a, a wonderful show yesterday, and uh, we were all really reveling here in in this experience of transparency and this experience of um, like really unburdening your heart and saying what 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 you're really calling for in this moment and we find that when the questions if they can come from there then they they answer everyone um, no matter who's out there so um, we'll probably be opening it up for questions as well and actually this morning I have a question on my heart so I just was going to just ask David so a few weeks ago, I suddenly got this ur kind of an urgency, which is always noteworthy when you get an urgency feeling, <laughs> um, to find uh, an old boyfriend. And I, was, I wasn't quite sure, but it was like quite gripping this feeling of wanting to locate him in time and space. <laughs> so I'm quite good at research. So I was able to find a certain amount out of where he seemed to be, but not av able to see any current uh, things he seems to be in Melbourne and the minute I heard Melbourne I suddenly thought perhaps I'm trying to find him because maybe David's going there and then uh, last week I found out you're going there so I didn't know if it was this feeling like there was something to share with him that you were there like because we had had this very kismet very given and very healing joining for a short time that was very beautiful and also seamlessly ended in a beautiful way I had this, but what I want to address with you was what I noticed was is this thought that has come to me before, this thought of panic rising, this thought of I need to connect with someone, this thought of a belief that I need to communicate. And and last night I actually found, uh, then I, I had to face this thought that perhaps he had passed away and this was needed to be cleared in my mind. So really I, I'm very aware that I was facing some thought that I needed to do something. At a very deep level, I needed to do something. And when I woke up this morning heavy, after finding out that he's still alive and well in the story, <laughs> um, I could feel that there was this urgency feeling which I've experienced before and which I have stories to match, which say something's required of me and the heaviness is this personal idea, this false responsibility. And the last time I felt that kind of urgency, I was in on an adventure. I thought the Spurs sent me on an adventure. I was in Thailand. But everything just came together where I, I went deaf, different things happened, where I was laid bare in many ways. And I kept getting this urgency to connect with a friend of mine. But I wanted it to be a surprise that he got my postcard to say I was in Thailand. And I didn't want to just phone him and ask him for his address. I, and I kept hearing, phone him, ask him for his address, phone him and talk to him, tell him you're in Thailand. So he actually committed suicide on the day I didn't phone him to get the address. And even with all the teaching and with all the awareness I have, I'm facing some thought in myself that there's still a belief that I must do something. And when it comes up, it's compelling. And I really want to lay on the altar so I can have the bigger understanding of when I feel that sense of urgency, I usually pause and pray. And just any of these thoughts of as we go deeper, our heart and our minds open up and we can hear many things because it's all my mind. I can hear my seeming brothers and sisters and their calls of their hearts too. And I really want to come in so clearly to that all I need to do is accept the atonement for myself. And I understand that not to be Sarah, but there is still something. And I know I don't even have to have a very good question for you to be able to answer mm -hmm. deeper. Um, so I just, I felt like it's something that a lot of us face as we go deeper, just our part in it. But also if there's anything deeper, you can just go for it with me. You're free mm. to... Yeah, yeah. Thank you for pouring that out. Well, I think it's it's interesting because that this 
switch in this transition in the mind of responsibility for something in linear time mm. into turning it around to responsibility for accepting the atonement mm. in the mind uh, is is a huge turnaround. You might say that's the whole shift in awareness, the shift in consciousness that the Course is aiming at, where some people know the Serenity Prayer, you know, the Serenity Prayer is very brief, but it's, we all know it's pointing at something really important, mm. you know, and that the, the last part, the wisdom to know the difference, is the, the guide that will take us into this very important experience mm. of really, you know, starting to realize what is what can change and what can't, and coming to a state of acceptance. Which is really what the atonement's about, accepting the atonement. So, oftentimes in the spiritual journey, there will be a very strong sense of urgency, and with good reason. In other words, the the Holy Spirit's voice, the voice for God, is is compelling. Um, it's not demanding, but it is compelling. Um, it's compelling us to wake up. It's compelling to to see the value of it, to follow it. And the Spirit will give us instructions that are very helpful. And not just instructions to be just left hanging there, but instructions that we're to follow. Because that's what ignites the awakening. If we just hear the instructions and we go, well, yeah, yeah, I, I heard you. Mm. But there's no um, component of following or action that's, that's asked, then there'll be a deadness. You know, mm. it'll be, again, it, it won't be that vibrant aliveness. So, uh, I think back to Helen and Bill, because there was a point, you know, Helen just hears the voice of Jesus, so to speak, comes in so clear, and there was a point where Helen called Bill and said, we need to call your friend so-and-so, and, and it was a very similar situation where this man was contemplating suicide, mm -hmm. and it felt very compelling. Jesus told Helen, Helen told Bill, we need to call your friend, and, and they did, and it was mm. very, very helpful. Uh, the other thing, though, and what you're bringing up is this sense of your experience in Thailand, where you heard it over and over, you know, call and get the address, get the address, get the address, and you didn't, and then you committed suicide. Well, the ego will hijack this urgency. It, it hijacks everything. Mm. Because the ego is, is single-minded with one thing, guilt. Um, it will use anything and everything for guilt. Mm. So even things that are seemingly very important in the plan of awakening, like the urgency feeling and, and getting instructions from the Holy Spirit, the ego will hijack it and it will project the guilt to time. Mm. And it, the guilt comes out sometimes as, if I had listened, I, if, if I personally or I, Sarah, had listened, then I might have prevented a suicide. I might, my friend might be living today. Mm. Or if I'd done this differently, if I'd only listened to what I felt in my heart instead of rushing into this, then it would be different. And so, again, we're getting very deep because that's getting into hypotheticals. The belief that things could actually be different than they are. Mm. And wisdom realizes that all things work together for good and, and, uh, let all things be exactly as they are, because all things are exactly as they are, but from the linear perspective of the ego, it's going to use anything to reinforce guilt. Mm. That something could have been different, I could have been better, I could have done more, I could have been more tuned in, anything at all, mm. it will try to use for guilt. So, we're being undone from this belief in in linear time, and Ultimately, there seems to be decisions to be made in time and space, and um, that's still a seeming, but I would say that, that we're asked to, okay, you still believe in time, so here, you still believe in decisions, so can you be open to pray, Holy Spirit, decide for God, for me? Can I be open to say, I give it to you, um, you take it from here? If there are decisions to be made, then let me know what those decisions are. Let me, give me the guidance. Let me follow that. And I think I had that same kind of panic um, back in the 1980s when I was 
pouring myself into the course, but I started going to course groups. So instead of it's just those first two and a half years of being so intimate, it's just Jesus mm. and the me, and so to speak, and the course, it, it was going to course groups. Suddenly I found myself going to five course groups and having this strange phenomenon happen where the Spirit started to speak through the body of David and and then people's heads would start to turn and they would be attentive and listen and this phenomenon started happening and then I would leave the course group and then as I was driving home, oh the ego would come in with a vengeance and just say, you know, well yeah, yeah, they seem to be very happy with what you said and everything, but, but what if you, they start to tune in and respect and honor what you're saying and what if if it, you give something that could harm them in some way or what if someone kills himself um, based on what you spoke or whatever and I remember having a you know kind of feeling like that's that feeling that can be fear or panic mm -hmm. come up and I do remember Jesus and the Holy Spirit basically saying no David you're not healing anyone and neither are you harming anyone. You know, you, you've got too much importance on this personality self. Mm. The Spirit's like, I've got it, I'm doing the whole thing, and if you interpret that you're helping anyone, or you're harming anyone, you've gone off right into the ego. Mm. You're trying to usurp and take on a function. This Holy Spirit is the healer, and nothing else. So it was like, oh, whew, thank you. And then, of course, this would happen too when I would facilitate small groups. I remember I had a small group at this store called Whatever Works Wellness Center on Montgomery Road and going in there and a small, tiny little thing. Uh, I was helping facilitate and everything and then uh, I did this for some weeks and then some months and then getting back to my house one time and getting two envelopes, two letters from two people uh, there was only like two or three people in the whole group, and I had uh, email, I had uh, messages, letters, postal letters from two of the women in this tiny little group that I was facilitating. And the Holy Spirit was saying, now here, this will be a very important teaching. Open the first one. So I opened the first one, and it was, oh, all praises, 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 praises. You've helped me so much. Da, 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 da. It just went on and on and on and on and on. Opened the second one from the another woman in the same little group, and it was all negative. Mm -hmm. How dare you, da, da 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 you know, it was just, and and then the Holy Spirit had me lay the two letters down side by side and say, see what I'm talking about, that, that you can't claim the credit and you can't take the blame. It's, it's not a person here. This is spiritual awakening, mm -hmm. and the Spirit is, is doing it all. And it really brought home that I, I was feeling the prompts, I was feeling those urgencies, those strong callings, mm -hmm. and I couldn't deny that, and, and none of us should deny that important feeling. But I was being shown, believe me, it's not personal. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything positive or negative here, which is what we talk about all the time, mm -hmm. that, that it's positive judgments hold the mind back from this forgiveness experience as much as the negative. Mm -hmm. Uh, thoughts and judgments. So it's it's a, it's a continuum that you have to see the whole continuum is false. Come back to the point. Come back to the point of the moment and that's where it's freed up. So that's the big shift from taking responsibility for outcomes and consequences to taking responsibility for your happiness, responsibility for your joy, responsibility for peace. Mm responsibility for accepting the correction, accepting the atonement. He says, you are not responsible for the error, but you are responsible for accepting the correction to the error. That's important. He also says, beware, you know, just keep an eye out. Do not project the error to time. As soon as we project it to a time scenario, like, oh, Sarah, she's there in Thailand and she, she could have made a better choice, you could have listened. As soon as the the error of mind gets projected to time, mm. that's where the, the problems start, that the guilt comes in immediately. Because it's a projection of error, and error and guilt are synonymous. Mm. But at least error is not a sin. It's not like a black mark on your soul, it's just an error to be corrected. And that's what spiritual awakening is about. It's about authentically being willing and open and ready to 
accept the correction. Mm, it's wonderful. I, I suddenly remembered in the middle of our quantum weekend that you said that again, do not protect the, the error to time. And, and it gave me a huge release. And, and I think that's what I need to be reminded of again today because I want to, um, my part it feels like laying my hands down until things are made super obvious or what is to do. But I want to come into seeing no error. I want to come into seeing trust. I don't want to use even these expansions in the mind to to lead me astray or think there's a problem i don't want to use it to reinforce the error i'd really mm. like to use it to you know be shown that there isn't there isn't anything personal to do and and i i'm i feel like there's been such a big self-concept my whole life and it's nothing to do with even a spiritual journey i mean since i was two in the story there's just this self-concept that that's that that i help people or that that's what I want to do. Like there's, there's a self concept that that was more important than than this sense of self. It was mm-hmm. just, but it of course that was a, a neat trick. I had a seven billion wide self concept. <laughs> so, <laughs> so whether it was saving the planet when I was very small, which I was trained to do, and or you know then saving individuals or animals or people, or or even that then the sense of self and I need to push the people away because I now have to to do it here. I just want this push pull feeling to to I just want to let it lie. I want to let it fall so I can face because I can feel there's still things to face like it, it, the idea that there will be repercussions like you said. Mm-hmm. Just that there could be repercussions whether it's on a, a seeming personal level or or interpersonal that there's repercussions in the screen. And I think maybe I've been enjoying watching the movies with everyone here on Saturday mornings. And I don't feel responsible for what happens to the characters in the movie, but I can watch w- and with that same sense of presence. And I really, I really would like to come into that more consistently. Being my experience, it's there a lot, but it's not consistent yet. And I think that's, I just want to then, like when something comes like this so raw, I want to let it up because it doesn't, because that's why it's coming. So I feel like there's all this gratitude for this man, boy, whatever. Because <laughs> that's what it's for. And I feel like this gratitude with everyone who's been in my life. Like this is all they've been bringing to me. Even the friend that seemed to commit suicide would be just, again, just this love letter of it's not for you. We'll just keep playing it out for you. <laughs> yeah, like it's a gift. Like like, like you're loved so much that I'll play it out for you. Mm-hmm. And and give you this another opportunity and yet another ready? opportunity. Like, are you ready? Did you get it yet? Did okay, get it we'll yet? try a different angle. <laughs> that time? No. You could just see a real playful spirit behind all of it. Did you get it that time? Don't worry. <laughs> we'll try again. You know, it's just very light and playful. And and that really is it. And the, I think that the thing that really... Uh, we want focus. We want directness. And, and uh, you know, all of us have had thoughts about about saving relationships and and saving the planet and saving the ozone layer and and the environment and saving people and a lot of times Christians will that's a big thing are you saved right. you know and saving souls and I mean it just goes on and on we could make a list generate a list of all the things you're supposed to save to be good and then the master comes in finally uh, Jesus comes in and, and he basically Again, like the formula yesterday, you know, that I was giving to mm-hmm. to candy. see the impossibility with with uh, candy of of uh, of sickness. You know, I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. It was like a one, two, three. Well, Jesus is it's that's a one, two, three. This is like a one, two. That it's the one, two to end all the one, twos forever, to end time, and basically, it's about sa- saving and salvation, where the only thing that we will say that can be saved is the mind. So really it's good to know that we don't have to save the whales, we don't have to save the dolphins, we don't have to save the ozone layer, we don't even have to have leftovers and save food, we don't have to save money, we don't have to save people, we don't have to save souls, plural souls, mm. as if there's multiple, you know, multiple so seven billion souls and then there's animal souls and depending on what religion you're working with there it can get pretty complicated. But there's no there's no need to save anything at all in form. It's only the mind that needs salvation. The only the mind needs to be saved, which is the one, 
And what's the two? Jesus doesn't even stop there. He gives us a great shortcut back to the kingdom of heaven to tell us exactly what needs to be saved. Leave go of all the rest and just save this one thing and that'll be good. But he doesn't even stop there. He says how. What a great master. Mm. Not only says what needs to be saved, but he's going to say how. And his how is peace. So only the mind needs to be saved and it's only saved through peace. Mm. Wow. That eliminates all the other means and that eliminates all the other objects, or you might say, directions. Just the mind to be saved, and only through peace. That's even simpler than our equation yesterday. It's get, now we're down to a two-parter. Only the mind needs to be saved, and it's only saved through peace. And that means the lesson is extremely simple. That's like a razor sharp, that any time the temptation comes up to feel guilty, Mm. With any one of our coulda, woulda, shoulda hypotheticals that the ego is so grateful to generate many, oh, what mm. about this? Oh, oh, you think you're so, oh, what about that? You happy now? Oh, well, don't forget about this, you know. It's always generating hypotheticals to keep the mind in fear and guilt. And it's so afraid of peace. It's afraid of stillness. It's afraid of the mind. I mean, why do you think the cosmos even seemed to come into existence except to persuade the sleeping mind to forget about the mind, to lose the mind, lose track of the mind, and get caught up into bodies and brains and images. You know, the whole point of this distractive device, the whole point of this cosmic linear smokescreen is for one reason, to make you mindless. So, you might say human beings that are focused on being human, having a body, having a brain, having a cardiovascular system, and all, so on and so forth. All of that is just one purpose, is to be mindless, to forget that you are a divine mind. Mm. To forget that you are an idea, Christ, in the mind of God. It's an elaborate scheme, and there's all this focus on fixing and saving. Problems, problems, problems. Oh, we got a plumbing problem. Oh, we got a this. We got, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, this is... I'm thirsty, there's this, there's this. It's always just projecting its own lack and neediness onto the body. And the body's completely neutral. In fact, the whole world is neutral. The whole world is has been neutralized because it, it went from being linear to, from the ego to being a point, simultaneous point with the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, which is what the quantum field forgiveness is about. And so the Spirit's just calling us to say, just remember, you're here to save your mind, and the one mind, and it's done through peace. So whenever you're not peaceful, you need to take a pause and just say, hmm, what, what am I thinking? What was I thinking? What was I believing? You, you need to have a moment where you, you want to be wrong mm. about the perception, no matter what you're feeling. If it's not happiness and peace and joy, it doesn't really matter what upset, and there's doesn't the degree of the upset doesn't matter, the direction of the upset doesn't matter, nothing of the of the air matters except, oh, I need to use peace, I need to come back to peace as my solution for my mind, as my healing of mind. I need to come back into that alignment of peace. Mm. And it's so extremely simple that it's overlooked in a myriad of disguises and myriad of forms. Yeah, I recently made a commitment to not project my discomfort uh, to my projects, which is what you're saying, you mm -hmm. know, project yeah. the error to time, yeah. and then to try and, you know, m tweak them. So that <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep so adjusting the, adjusting just keep the adjusting project. Just uh, keep the people on the projects or the project or the post or the way the spelling or whatever, you know, uh, tweak it. It gets into perfectionism where yeah. you try to perfect the form and then that, that's a real mind bender. Mm, <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, especially, I mean, and it's such a great backdrop because you have someone who in the story was dyslexic and uh, is in charge of these things going out. You know, it's 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 ironic. And I realized that I was still def defending something in the way I was trying to prepare even a post. And I, I really had to surrender and watch that. And the second I did it, they said, well, here's a proofreader for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, yes, instantly. Yes. And, and so, uh, yeah, I really... I I just want to I want to really commit to that ex of not displacing my dis my comfort and when you were talking about um you know undoing the pleasure as well I was thinking that you know oh, those are all just quick fixes 
to allay the discomfort. So I don't want to either project the discomfort and try and fix it in the form in any way. And yeah. and that to me felt linked in somehow with pleasure. I was as I watched that Jesus movie where um, Risen. They were all. Uh, they all had this scene where they're they're spending the night out um, on their way to uh, Copernicus, or I'm not sure where they were going, um, and they're sleeping on the rocks. And I looked mm. at them and I went, oh, they look so comfortable. I wish I'd love to be on that rock. <laughs> you know, really, sincerely, I thought I felt the relaxation. Now, and I was in one of these lazy boy chairs at a, a really plush cinema, with my feet up, going, it could that rock is is so much more comforting than this this chair because I want the peace. And it was symbolic. That's what they had chosen. You know, they yeah. had, they were they were just following. They they just had their little bag, and and I was like, I want the peace, and so. I think I'm also watching, I don't want, com- the, anytime I think there's a complexity, it's the same projection of time, er- yeah. error. That's a good example, because in that movie, they're happily on their way uh, to where they are going to meet Jesus again, the mm. risen Jesus, yes. so they're on their way to meet Christ. Well, that's a pretty good description of purpose. Mm. On your way to meet Christ, I can't even think of a better description of purpose and and therefore, a body sleeping on a rock is like, well, I'm on my way to meet Christ. <laughs> like I'm having, it reminds me of recently when when uh, Nikita and I were out and we took this a friend took us to this far off beach that had gigantic waves and had to hike and hike and hike and hike to finally get to the beach and there were these big dunes and. I just was happy. I said, oh, look at this dune. And I thought it was a perfect reclining right. <laughs> chair and just uh, laid back. And it was, ah, oh, God, this is so perfect. But, yeah, it, it, it's like when you're on your way to meet Christ or when you're in the opening to the Christ, to the Christ idea, to the Christ mind, wow, this world is spectacular. Mm. Everything about this world is spectacular because you're in the point. On the way to meet Christ, on the way to see myself as the Christ, on the way to Christ's self-recognition, rec- self-realization, that's that's the point of everything. Mm. So when you're in the point, then everything is glorious. So when a friend says to you, you know, get to the point, just remember that next time. <laughs> if some, you're having a discussion, come on, get to the point. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Forget, I don't need to talk anymore. <laughs> that's a, Come back to the point. You know, mm. that's... That's everything. Mm. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, I'm really open. Do you, if you feel like taking more questions yeah. or a song or whatever, yeah, what would you I'm like? open to. Um, we'll see if there's any questions, and if there is, we can address them. And if not, Eric could come out and sing us a song. Candy. Good morning. Good morning. It's me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a, a, another question, and it's related to who we are, who we, I am. Um, Today's lesson is, I am as God created me, and uh, after the sharing from yesterday, it's amazing how that is really sitting well with me. So that was fantastic. I wanted to share that back. At the same time, I'm noticing that when I'm practicing that, because I'm trying to, to say the words as often as possible, that there's this notion of um, the one that we are basically taught in, in Christianity, that we are a soul. And I remember reading in, in, in one of your books, David, I think it's in the Awakening one, um, that there's this notion that we're a soul that is inside this body. And you could say almost like encased in the body and, and, and that that's who we are. And, uh, 
based on, on what I've learned so far in the course, that's not who we are. We're not this little thing that is somewhere in that body um, because we're spirit. So I guess um, what I sometimes find a bit confusing is, uh, is the idea that I am a mind as opposed to spirit, or, or maybe I've gotten something wrong. Because for me, soul has always been spirit. It's, and mind for me is almost like um, a level below spirit, you could say, it, talking about levels where the body is at the lowest level then comes the mind and then comes the spirit but um maybe looking at it from that point of view is 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 is, is still conceptual is still you know the illusion so if, if you could clarify that it would be great okay that's great well one thing that comes to mind right away is the, the course started being translated to all these languages i don't know we're maybe up to 17 or 18 mm -hmm. languages or something like that and when they came to the french language um, in French, there's there's not two different words for mind and for spirit. It's l'esprit. You know, it's it's one word. There's not two things there. And it almost reminds me too of uh, that movie, What the Bleep Do We Know, where the the scientists they said we they've actually taken photos of of something that's just one thing, but it appears as many. And then they actually show the picture, and then he says that he's like, "This is just mind-boggling." He says it looks like a series of, of a couple or multiple objects, and he goes, "And it's it's just one thing, it's just one thing, you know." <laughs> he so he says it's mind mind-boggling. So, in terms of spirit, um, in a course in miracles, you might say that uh, at times. Jesus capitalizes the word mind. And when he capitalizes it, he'll talk about the mind of God. Uh, and and in the other in the sense of like, well if God is pure spirit, then that's an interesting phrase, the mind of God. Because he's certainly equating like the French do, <laughs> he's kind of equating mind and spirit, the spirit of God, the mind of God. He's he's using that term, the the mind of God the mind of Christ, um, uh, or even saying that Christ, and he capitalizes Christ as well, is an idea in the mind of God. Ooh, now there's an idea in the mind of God. Wow, that's interesting, because we had spirit before, one word. And truly, throughout the literature of spirituality that you're talking about, soul uh, is a term that gets used in different ways. And Jesus is basically saying, you can use the word soul, in fact, he did, they actually kind of did some editing to kind of make it a little more consistent, but initially he was using the word soul as well. And that's fine too, as long as it's seemed to be eternal spirit. If you think of soul as eternal spirit, if you think of it as this thing that's on a journey, a journey through time and space, or something that incarnates into physicality and then leaves and then reincarnates, you know, like reincarnation, then he's like, no, no. That's not a good definition of soul, because the soul is a creation of God. God creates the soul, and if God is spirit, then the soul is spirit. If God is eternal, then the soul has to be eternal. So it gets, in the literature, it starts to get complicated. What Jesus does is he, he's using capital mind, capital mind, then he starts using lowercase mind, um, which he says there's a right mind and a wrong mind. Well, that can't be in reality. But obviously he's, he's using that for some kind of educational purposes. Uh, and, and he says the mind seems to have two parts. It's as if it has two parts. And he says that in the clarification of terms, which is at the end of the book, which originally was dictated at the beginning, but why they stuck it at the end, I don't know. I think clarification of terms would have helped me a bit. Uh, <laughs> Jesus did take me back to the back of the book fir first, so it didn't mess me up, but uh, but anyway, in there he says it's as if the mind, as if the mind has two parts, and he italicizes the two words as if. When Jesus italicizes words, it, they must be important. I mean, when he capitalizes capitalizes something, I pay attention. Okay, Whew. you're capitalizing this capital M mind. It must mean something 
And then you've got a lowercase mind, and it's a right mind and a wrong mind. Okay, there's a difference there. I trust that he's doing this for a reason, that there's, he's giving me some steps and a ladder to come back into heaven. He's not just going, boom, love is, period. You know, he's, he's giving me 1,200 some odd pages. You know, he's, he's got a system going there, and it must have a, an importance to do that. So, ultimately, he does come out and he says, mind is the activating agent of spirit. Ooh, isn't that interesting? Mind is the activating agent of spirit. So, it's almost like spirit is just what is. You know, like uh, Byron Katie, loving what is. Spirit it would be what is. And then, we're going through an experience of, of awakening to what is. Of coming out of our sleep, our slumber, our, our uh, amnesia. Coming back to a remembrance of spirit, a remembrance of God. And these terms are just terms that he's using to help us out. And um, to me it's not confusing in the sense when I think, well, I'm just going to give myself over to the whole process. Uh, I'm not going to try to pick, pick the book apart, uh, because at times it, if I start to go looking for differences and to pick it apart, it's almost like I'm, I'm, I've got a ladder and I'm not interested in climbing the ladder, I'm more interested in picking, comparing this rung with that rung and trying to make some linear sense out of the ladder. And Jesus is like, grab hold of any rung you can get. I've thrown the darn thing down there and, and I don't really care. Get, grab the, any rung you can on this thing. It's like you're, you're drowning in, a, in the sea and he's throwing a ladder, one of those, those rope ladders, off and he's throwing it right out in the ocean and 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 you know we're in there going I don't, I don't understand what does that wrong mean it is you just grab the rope grab the ladder uh, come on uh, you know that's he's so gracious he's he's throwing a rope he's throwing a, a rope ladder down and he said and then when people get on and they start climbing and then they get so fascinated with the rungs ooh this is oh this is good this is oh I like oh I, oh Oh, I like it. I'm staying here. It's good enough. Good enough. I like this rung. You know, the ego will, it, it, it wants to camp out. It wants to set up house. Uh, it wants to marry a rung. Oh yeah, I'll marry you. Oh yeah, this is good enough. Good enough. Enough. You know, and Jesus is like, no, keep climbing. Uh, come on. I didn't throw you this so that you could just get half the way up. You know, and, no, I, I'm staying here. I'm going to stay right here. He's like, no, actually, you know, this this ladder, rope ladder, is coming off of the Titanic, <laughs> and you better keep climbing, because <laughs> if you just hang on there, the ba the whole the ladder, the the ship, <laughs> it's going down. Everything in this world is going down, and we need to keep climbing to go towards eternity, to go towards life eternal, which is really the point of it all. The point isn't to climb. And when we come into eternity, we don't go, oh, thank you for that rope. There is no rope. You, you actually forget the ladder uh, once you, you get to that point. You forget the entire ladder. It's as if, it's as if it was never there. If, it, as if there was never a climb, never a process. It's just, it's reverse amnesia. Then you remember God and you forget the ego and the time and the process. So, so it's good that you're you're aware of this, when you call upon, you think I'm a soul, just kind of remember that that's like hearkening you to eternity. And don't get too fascinated with the mechanisms of the words and the props and the symbols that get used. Let your desire be to awaken. And when you have a strong desire to awaken, then everything that you need, the symbols will gently flow, just temporarily, into your awareness, and then they will also flow away. They will fade away and they will disappear. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I'm thinking all these teachings in the literature, and, and even what we, we see today in the world, there's so many coming from the East, there's so many New Age teachings. Um, I was thinking, I mean, yes, they're all a creation of our egos, it's all an illusion. Um, but I remember reading somewhere um, in one of the books um, that 
that was just recently actually and um that basically we're moving from dreaming this illusion to a dream of forgiveness and then that basically is the step or was it you sarah who mentioned that i don't remember um anyway uh and then that is basically the last step in terms of the illusion of the conceptual world in which we live and that's where god takes the last step quote unquote and 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 and, and we awaken so first of all it, did i get it right and 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 secondly if that is is sort of what happens then um would it be uh, accurate to say that all these teachings regardless of what they look like are in some way or another helping us get to that dream of forgiveness could that, i guess i'm trying to find a way to reconcile the fact that i've been learning so many different things for so many years now and and that's okay i don't regret it because they've gotten me to this point where i am right now and 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 studying the course in miracles um but i sometimes wonder because i see other people who are stuck you could say in those um in those teachings and even though i'm i don't think i'm judging it but it's like oh okay i was there once okay um but it was helpful for me hopefully it'll be helpful for them and hopefully those teachings will bring them somewhere that gets them to that dream of forgiveness and then we can all awaken so to speak so um yeah i forgot what the question was but am i making sense yeah i think you were just describing uh that thing i talk about like amnesia when when you have an amnesia from god then there's a, a step from from aware being that you're dreaming becoming aware that you're dreaming and then opening to a complete change of purpose in which you forget the world and you awaken to god and so it's that reverse amnesia like instead of forgetting god and and remembering the world you forget the world and remember god so it's just that turn so in that sense yeah that's a nice conceptualization of it and then ultimately it comes down to really your desire to know god to know thyself you know like the greeks said know thyself it just becomes your your desire your passion and and therefore you don't have any kind of interest in comparing contrasting mm -hmm. or even hanging on to concepts you know like buddha and jesus both say lay aside the concepts so it's beautiful there was one point where helen shuckman was scribing the course scribing the course and then the course came and she was a little egoically a little protective protective of the course she called it my book and um you know it's typical of the ego it will you know it will try to claim anything even the course and then um started to notice that there were people that were talking about the book and comparing and contrasting it to other spiritual pathways which initially she didn't have any she was a research psychologist that really wasn't didn't care about spiritual pathways was kind of like taken in to be the scribe and then turned to be an answer to a prayer for help but uh, there was one point where she started like kind of judging people who seemed to be judging the course <laughs> the the my book was taking a few hits here and there and uh, she was feeling conflictual and she went to Jesus and Jesus had a beautiful thing that he said to her he said he said take not another's pathway as your own neither should you judge it and oh wow that's there it is again take not another's pathway as your own neither should you judge it in other words if you keep focusing on on the spiritual awakening using your emotions and and giving things over to the holy spirit that's a full-time job and really we're just asked don't get distracted into looking out what are they doing what are they up to what about this path we're not even asked to make some kind of composite theology or composite religion we're being called into eternal peace we're being called into an actual forgiveness experience that means letting go of judging and comparing and contrasting so you know if somebody asked me with sincerity if they asked me about a particular book for example or theology or whatever um 
Like if somebody said to me, well, I've, I've studied many religions and many philosophies and many spiritualities, and they said, uh, some of them seem to be kind of dualistic, where they say there's good and evil and, and heaven and hell, and, and that they, these are both realities. And there's a there's like a a, a, a long-standing conflict that's going on between two things that are actually different, and it's like two forces battling. Almost like sometimes people will say, "Well, you know, Satan is just a fallen angel," uh, and now Satan is the angel is turned against God, and it's like these two forces fight the good fight and you know win the battle and all this and this. There's dualistic philosophies and then there's non-dualistic philosophies. All is one, all is God, all is one in truth and so on and so forth. They, and they say which one is more helpful to me. I would, if I was guided in, in that moment to say I would, I would say well the non-dualistic pathway <laughs> is an advance. It will take you there more directly. But see even that's just a, a guidance. That's just a, a, a a judgment of the moment, because in reality there's not dual and non-dual. You know, it's just what, to be truly helpful is just to let the Spirit come through and use whatever symbols, whatever parables, bring healing and joy and laughter, you know, and you're really teaching what you would learn. You're coming, clearing the way the debris to come into the silence for, for yourself and for the whole universe. So, yeah, I'm not into comparing and contrasting teachers or teaching styles or books or so on and so forth. It's just that if something comes through that will help seemingly save time, and that's just a concept too. If time doesn't exist, how can it be saved? But we'll shorten seeming learning process or shorten the unlearning process, if you want to call it that, shorten the undoing process. These are all just concepts, but it's the prayer of the heart that's underneath for that peace and for that clarity, that's what's important. And then the words, the words just come, they're just given involuntarily. You don't, there's no point in judging them. There's no point in saying, oh, I, sh I shouldn't have said that, or I could have said something different. That's all, and it's back into hypotheticals. Again, in the mind, the ego will just use that to try to generate guilt. So it's good. You're at, these are very good, subtle questions, but you can start to resonate with Maybe not even with the words themselves, but just with the presence, the love that's underneath the words. That's the most important thing. Mm, yeah, yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, something that I've been noticing, and I'm wondering if this is part of the unwinding, of the unlearning, that um, increasingly I'm, I'm reacting less emotionally to things. Um, even when I'm watching movies and, and I do my best to watch them from the perspective, oh, okay, what can I learn in terms of what am I feeling and the way you have guided us to do. I find that it, 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 it's become more objective in the sense that I'm, I'm not feeling much. Sometimes there's an outburst and usually it's related to that longing that I do feel inside to awaken and just be back home, so to speak, the way I call it. Um, but I find myself increasingly just thinking, oh, okay. And then instead of feeling something, there's more a thought that I become aware of or, or a belief that I become aware of. And if I remember the levels of mind as you described them, um, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I'm getting closer to that core. That must be part of the unwinding. I, I guess I'm just trying to understand what I'm going through. It, not that I'm always there. <laughs> I mean... I'm sure there's still a lot of unwinding to do, but is that basically what's happening? As you get deeper into that core, or closer to the core, that you become less emotional about things? I think there's a purification of the emotions, so you become seemingly more aware of, of the love. Although, again, love is not something that you can be more or less aware of. So, you know, these are very much like it's the latter again. So, when you're saying, like, I guess I'm just trying to understand what is happening, my suggestion would be, uh, just let go of that. Uh, what does that mean? Let go of the need to understand 
uh, the steps. Uh, I've had people that come and they'll they'll go, oh my God, I found it in the Manual for Teachers. Jesus has laid out the stages of the development of trust. And then they try to go, where am I? <laughs> Which am? And some people will say, I'm on two or four or six or whatever. And then they'll go, or maybe I'm on all of them simultaneously. You know, they, I don't know. They say, I don't know. And it's kind of reminds me of that I Heart Huckabee, you know, if you mm. transcended time and space, you know. Yes, time but not time space. Time but not space. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you know, it's a funny little scene there. And, and I don't know what you're talking about is is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, uh, or in Solaris, I could tell you what's happening, <laughs> what's happening but that wouldn't really tell you what's happening. Uh, because he, George Clooney, you know, the, Chris Kelvin has to experience it for himself. He, nobody can prepare him for Solaris. He's, mm. The words aren't going to do it. So what I tell people is save yourself a lot of anxiety, a lot of frustration and everything by not trying to figure out your spiritual pathway, by not trying to figure out and understand the process. Give it up. And what does that mean? Well, there's a great line where Jesus says, peace and understanding go together and cannot be found apart. So, when I'm completely peaceful, you could call that self-realization or enlightenment, then finally there's an understanding. But without enlightenment, there's absolutely no understanding at all. And the mind's kind of like a cat chasing its tail. What do you think? Da, da, da. I read, did you read that latest book? I did a workshop with. Oh, I read. I met that one. He was an angel. Well, well I saw him one time. I, you know, he, he wasn't happy. You know, da 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 da. This the ego is. It's just trying to make an understanding, of the world, and even of the process, and even of the so-called spiritual process of awakening, and none of that can be understood, because peace and understanding go together and cannot be found apart. So again, one line from Jesus, just, ooh, you can just, ah, go right into that experience. And it does seem to be a, a release process, but I think it's more of an acceptance. You're just coming to a place of, of self-acceptance, of accepting the correction. That's what's happening. Beautiful. Thank you so much. It, it's extremely helpful. I just noticed it's basically the ego trying to control the process by asking, by by getting stuck in the process and trying to understand it, so to speak. So, um, oh, it, yeah, this is sinking in. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Candy. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. I'm having a song, one of Rusty's songs oh, come to mind. Uh, uh, this is Resta received like 275 or so songs from the angels, but uh, sometimes she would just get a download of a song and she would come out and she would just burst into laughter, burst into laughter. Sometimes with a particular uh, lyric. And one time, uh, uh, I think the line that she got, she was laughing on, keep you stuck in time like flies in glue, she just burst into laughter, or she always would have a line that she would be channeling the song from the angels and then she just burst into laughter because she couldn't stand how funny it was, you know, she couldn't hold on. But the, the one, I think the one that that one was from was called Streamin' Dreamio. Because mm. here we are doing, now like streaming. We're, we're streaming, <laughs> and um, isn't that interesting? Now, years later, that was back with Resta in the 1990s, but years later we've got LM Virtual, we're, we're streaming Awake, uh, this beautiful show, and, and Stream and Dreamio was, I think it went, there's stream and audio, and stream and video, the faster way to go when you have to download, but now you need to know about a crazy show called Streaming Dreamio, <laughs> and the song just is hilarious. It's like the angels were forecasting this moment, <laughs> as here we are on our streaming show, Wake in the Heart. Uh, can't organize the script, prioritize the script. Forms you cannot pick, the ones you like. You know, I mean, the whole song is about just sit back and enjoy the 
the whole ride. Enjoy the watching. I mean, these songs are a whole pathway to God. We've got them online, I think, musicofchrist.net. Mm -hmm. If you are tired of reading, you're tired of meditating, you're tired of, of following gurus and teachers, you're tired of you're tired of living in the world. You just want to just find a nice soft chair like this. Oh, it even leans back, <laughs> and you just kind of lean back and and put on your your rest of music of Christ. These are the kind of songs that are so wonderful, and they just wash over you. And, oh yeah, you just wash. What's your pathway to God? Oh, I'm going to be washed. I'm just going to be washed. I'm just going to let it wash over me. Wash away all thoughts. Wash away all concerns all doubts. And and laugh. I mean, Rest and I would just laugh and laugh and laugh at these songs that kept coming and coming and coming and coming until we have a whole other pathway to God through music, mm -hmm. through music and lyrics. And that's available. So that's the fun part of this awakening is that when you really feel the joy and the happiness then all these symbols, there's a lot of ropes and a lot of ladders that come out and it's it, what what do you resonate with you like music great you like movies great you like meditation silence great why not use all three if you like all those three things you like tennis why not use that as a open-eyed meditation and and play some tennis tai chi yoga the spirits like have fun mm. Really enjoy it. Let the Spirit use whatever symbols you have in your life in, as part of a gentle awakening. And and feel really good about that. Feel like you can totally engage in it and you don't have to sit back and, and analyze and contrast and compare and try to pick and choose where you just it's just given to you. Maybe you like breathing, you know, use that as your meditation. Breathing meditation. <laughs> Well, how do you reach God? I breathe. Mm. Okay, good. You know, we just need to realize the spirit can use everything, and you don't have to start to keep judging what's spiritual and what's not spiritual. Some people say, "Well, you know, you got to eat organic and this and this." But I thought Jesus said two thousand years ago, "It wasn't what you put in your mouth that defiled; it's what proceeds forth from your heart." Mm. You know, he told us that two thousand years ago. Uh, sometimes people are judging certain actions. And certain things are spiritual. It's more spiritual to not lock your car than to lock your car. It's more spiritual to, you know, eat this thing or do this thing. It's more spiritual to exercise and not or this. Or this. It's just trying to lift certain images up as higher or better than the others. And in the end, you have to drop the whole thing anyway. So why not do it sooner than later? Why not drop all of that comparison and just? Pray to the Spirit to, to say, what, is, what will inspire me to keep opening to you? And then whatever the Spirit drops in, you got it. Grab on and grab. let it take you. <laughs> That's right. Grab a rung and Just go on. for a ride. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it, it's not like, I, I also had this, you know, what, how do I need to be, this management feeling with it all. And I'd even turn around to Jason in the early days and say, how am I doing mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time? This constant evaluation and... And the Spirit's trying to sweep me off my feet. Yeah. And just yeah. You know, grab a rung and <laughs> this ladder's going up, you yeah, know. It's, yeah, It's so, it's just, that's the only direction there is, like, and it's, it's symbolic here. But I don't know, I just, that's, that's it. I'm for that. I'm for that. And I, I'm, I'm for sharing the joy of that and that, that it's true, you know, so that there isn't, the, you know, there isn't this hard, arduous journey in linear time that we have to go through. You know, I always want to come back to that point that you're offering. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting a scene flashing in my mind of the, the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, oh. and then with Dick Van Dyke, and then his father, the mm. one with the mustache and everything, where he goes out in the loo, you mm. know, to just close the door and everything, and he gets taken up and is carried along in this blimp kind of thing. And at some point, they just decide to, to lower him if he doesn't agree with them. Mm. So... And lowering, lowering, lowering to this bathroom down toward the water, and he's singing, singing, singing away. I mean, even as it as it comes down and touches the water, he's not. He has no thought of anything of the world. 
not of water, not of dropping, not of landing, not of sinking, not of of drowning, nothing, nothing, nothing. It's just this happy man singing, 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 singing. I can't remember. He's actually he's singing that he thinks he's flying first class. Yeah. He's got he's, his own cabin. Yeah, he's, he's so happy that he's got his own cabin and he's singing a song of gratitude as, as they're trying to lower him into the water. He's so happy. He's literally oblivious. And I think that's the thing. If we get into our joy and our function, we do tend to become oblivious of the world. Because why? Because it's not outside us. Because when we're happy, the whole world is happy. We've been fooled into believing that, that we can be happy and the world can be sad. But if the world is not outside our mind, when we're happy, the whole world's happy. You know, mm. when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. That is metaphysically correct. That is <laughs> true empathy. That is true empathy. So that's why we're so happy with that song. When you're laughing, you know, yeah. it just goes on and on. It's teaching us that we are one mind, we're unified, and that we need to stay happy by by staying aligned with our source. And, you know, that's as simple as you can say it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's pretty good. People say sometimes <laughs> it's it's not easy or it's difficult or anything. I, I, I just can't believe that. You mean to tell me that, that it's more easy to be to be angry and hurt and conflicted than it is to be happy. I can't believe there's anything simpler than happiness. You know, that's that's my experience. In fact, it's it's the only thing that there is now. It's not there's nothing else. So you just stay open. I did get a a call or it was a Facebook message today and I'll deal with it later today, but it was a friend who was writing on behalf of another friend who's in such a dark dark place, a suicidal place and just saying could could uh the friend do a Skype call with me, so yeah, I'm I'm open to those kind of things. But that's just just be happy and be used by spirit, you know, to to shine your light. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I feel like and for me and for what I brought this morning and the, it, you shared on, it's like I can I can follow those prompts and everything. It is only the lack of peace with anything that I seem to be doing that is. The constriction and I need not worry about the form of any of it or even the backdrop of what it looks like if I'm yeah. devoted to the singular piece. So. Yeah, you can be quite clueless about the yeah. form. Yeah. yeah, and therefore truly helpful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a conduit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thank you, David. Yeah, thank thank you. you. Thank mm. you. Well, it's been an absolutely beautiful show, and I'm very grateful for David for having joined us. And um, he's he's off on an adventure. He's going to Australia next week. So if you have friends down under, um, you can let them know that he's going to be in Melbourne on the 20th and in Sydney on the 26th. And there may be other adventures in between, but just let them know that he's he's coming for those dates for definite. And yeah, more spontaneous travels like California, you just really open and whatever unfolds, yeah. unfolds. Yeah, it would be very interesting to just watch what unfolds and... And thank you for everyone who's responded. I did put that email out about spontaneous travels, and there was a number, I think over 50 responses, and it's still trickling in. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to to watch, to see, just watch the dream. Mm. Just watch the dream. And Awake um, in the Heart um, is having a schedule change. And as of, do you want to come and talk about that? Sure. So I can't, can't quite remember <laughs> when we're on again and when we're not. I'll, I'll be on tomorrow, but aside from that. Yeah, we have to, we have our Miracle movie tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and then our Sunday service. But next week, we're trimming our schedule down quite a bit because it feels like a lot of new, exciting things are going to be coming in that our minds are getting prepared for. And uh, so next week, this we'll only have this show, Awaken the Heart, on Monday morning. So there'll be Monday morning and then Friday... Uh, evening will be the Francis, uh, Out of the Blue Comes Francis Zoo at Friday at 5 p.m. And then we'll have our Saturday morning movie. We'll keep that. So next week it'll just be the Monday, the Friday, and the Saturday, and then our Sunday service as well. So basically we'll have four things next week. Uh, Monday morning at 10, Friday at 5 with Francis, Saturday at 10 for the movie, and then our Sunday service at 11. 
so four days in a row friday saturday sunday that's monday. right it's yeah really four days next week it'll be four friday saturday sunday monday yeah so it's great yeah and um uh, we'll send out an email so if any of you need to make sure you're on the email for living org, and if you click the, the, L- in the, you click the <laughs> lm virtual button <laughs> if you click on the lm virtual button um, you can sign up and it's really helpful because what we're going to be doing um, is not only will we be letting you know spontaneously if we're doing adventurous types of things like we spend most of our life doing here, but we're also, I'm also going to find exactly all that music that David was talking about and send you out a link for it so that you could listen to Streaming Dreamio. And and really, I encourage you actually, I'm going to lean in a bit more towards yeah. you for this. Yeah. Um, I encourage you to to start looking at all of the things we have on offer that can support you. So we're going four days a week, but we have been putting out all of this wonderful content that has been coming, pouring through David for, for years now, whether it's the books or the online videos, which are just so rich and deep. It's all of, of the core uh, teachings that David has done on video, and it's all on one site. And that's acim-online.net. ACIM-online-video.net we'll, we'll put that in the email too. <laughs> and then ACIM.me, which is the audios, which is searchable, and you just put in your question, and there is David answering you. Again, you know, with a little write-up of the nugget of the core of the talk. And also the doorway, which is really just wonderful. Um, the doorway is the the deepest of these teachings collected under themes. So we've got... Um, uh, trust and inspiration, guidance, um, um, transcending fear, which is just wonderful. It's like instead of having something at the back of your mind that you're like constantly putting to one side, it's like turning to face it and finding all this love and joy that's really waiting for you beneath it. And of course, always a favorite holy relationship, which is really about looking um, at the relationship you have with everything in the world and yourself, but also those ones that seem to entangle us the most, which seem to be these interpersonal, very close relationships, which we can use for an experience of transcendence as well, because they're what give what's given. And David's always reminding us that the course is nine chapters on relationship because it's a pathway of relationship. You know, and I think that's always been a very attractive thing for all of us. This is a pathway of relationship, something that's ubiquitous. It's everywhere in your life and you can use it. You don't need to go to a cave to to come home to an experience of the peace that David's sharing about. So I really encourage you to look at all those things. And that's ACM online courses. Is that correct? ACM courses dot com. That one. <laughs> My like PR a, function is like like a hundred different websites. I like, <laughs> yeah, the easiest one to go to, and it's a great one to share with friends as well, or to share online is acim.biz. That's really great because it's like a portal site, and what we've done is we've linked all of our sites to there. And if you go in there, you will find absolutely hundreds of hours of audios you've probably never even heard, even if you've been following us for years. There's just it's just a wealth of of links to other portals. And of course, um, the Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment Online, which is mwge.org. Always a favorite. And yeah, I just want to say thank you again, David. And thank you, Eric, for doing all these weeks of just because we feel we're having a shift uh, of, of everything we've been throwing our heart into for the last while. And it just this every time there's a shift, it's just a renewal of our commitment to what we're doing it for and why. And I think I show up here showing why I'm doing it every day for myself. And, and, and then there's a gift in that for the whole universe because it's in my mind and my heart. So I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. And really do check out all of those channels and share them with your friends. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank okay. you. Okay. And I'll leave you with a line from Streaming Dreamio. Oh, great. No need to get upset. You can't adjust the set. The only choice you get is your point of view. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Musicofchrist.net. That's the link. Uh, oh, great. I think it's I think it's active for many years actually. Yeah. Musicofchrist.net. Love you Bye, all. I love Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you.